Well, we're going to talk. Okay. Let's, oh, okay, let's let's get into it. Let's get into it. Nita in the building. <laughs> yes, sir. Nita, 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 better known as hey, Miss Queen. What's good with your brother? You know, it's funny. It, it's funny that me and you connected, right? Because I was just, mm-hmm. I, you know, I did my Let's Talk Lifey earlier today, and I was, you know, just, you know, my Let's Talk live feed is just me you know just just me rambling down the road you know what i'm saying you know like yeah. if something coming on the, on the mind and you know something to pass the time i just i just ramble and ramble down the road but I, I mentioned that i was in a lot of groups you know what i'm saying i, mm-hmm. I told them that i was in a lot of groups back in the day this is like this is like 2022. We talking about like what, 2018, 2019, where the Zello channels was hot? Yeah, around about 19, 19, 20. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was just telling my people that, you know, during that time, you know, the Zello channels was hot. And, you know, a lot of truckers took over <laughs> Zello, just like a lot of truckers just took over TikTok, you know, and I was just talking about that. And it's funny. Yes. Isn't it awesome? Yeah, oh, no, it ain't. It ain't all anyway. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that mess in a minute, yeah. but, but, <laughs> but yeah, man. I mean, it's 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 been a while. So, Miss Queen, man, I yo, we used to have some, we used to have some awesome conversations on on Zello and off Zello. Where where have yes. you before we get into anything? Where have you been? And what what made you decide to get into trucking and what you was doing before then? I know that's a lot of questions, but go ahead. <laughs> um, other than just rolling up and down these highways. Um, prior to getting into trucking, I worked in healthcare, worked on a cardiac unit down in Austin. Um, met a lot of great, awesome people. So, I mean, I did the whole healthcare thing for about almost 30 years. And I started losing my feel for it. It was becoming too political. Um, So I looked for something different. So so was it, what was the the political about? Because, I mean, a lot of people that got into the healthcare field, I mean, the money was there, right? But, but I... I mean, the money was good. Don't don't get me wrong. The money was good. Um, but I guess with the time that I got into it, it was because I love helping people. I love listening to the stories of especially our elders, you know, about their life and Man, it was it was just an awesome thing. And with me, it was a, I'm going to treat these people the way I would want my grandparents to be treated. See, because I was blessed enough. I had both of my grandparents until they was well in their 90s, mm. past their, you know, mid to late 90s. I had both of my grandparents. So, and I mean, and the family was big enough till we never had to put them in a type of facility. Mm. It was enough of us, they was able to stay home. Mm. So that's how I looked at it, and it made my job a lot easier. Now, you know, with it made these... my job a lot easier. Now, you know, with and, these... But today, you know, it's more people, they're getting into it just for a check. That's mm. it, and that's all. Well, now you you know, know, and I had people, you know, you're spending too much time with the patients. You can't be spending that much time with the patients. I mean, it's really, literally, some of them, they just need somebody to listen for a few minutes. Now, you know, we can we can constitute that to trucking, too. Like there was there's a lot of old timers, a lot of veterans that's that's in trucking as well. That you know that right. that likes to that likes to tell their stories. You know, there's you know they're not on social media. Those are the ones I, I tell the people. Those are the ones that you really need to listen to. Not not the ones that's on social media. Though when you you know back right. back before the pandemic, you can go in you 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 can go in the iron skillet. There'd be an old timer right there that'd be sitting next to you or across from you, and 
And, you know, you just spark up a conversation and he'll tell you how it was back in the 20s, back in the back in the 50s, well, back in the 60s. Well, I think it 60s. was a little bit different. It must have been a little bit different as opposed to males versus females mm-hmm. out here. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, because with the females, is I feel that we keep a little bit distant from yeah. a lot of males. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because for whatever reason, you have a quiet a few males out here. You give them a little conversation, and they want to take off far left field. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's yeah. like, no, I'm just being nice, just holding, you know, a, hey, how you doing? You know, be safe, you know. But mm-hmm. it's, it's, I think that's a little bit different. Well, um, I mean, females I, and and males. I mean, that's I. You know, I I agree with you. I I agree with you. But I I'm just kind of like correlating the two between you know how you'll how you'll sit down and talk with uh you know with 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 the elderly and they got some very very interesting stories and it's the same thing that I could I could correlate with the older drivers that has very very interesting stories. You said yeah. that you said that uh that. 30 years like wow i mean you've been in the healthcare field for for that amount of time where did your interest in trucking come from oh my interest in trucking was struck when i was a little girl <laughs> my grandparents the street that they lived on it had a plant at the end of the street and they called it the creso um and one of our neighbors that lived directly across the street, he was a truck driver. Um, I mean, and I just fell in love, you know, just to hear them coming down the road, you know, like little kids, we will run out, pumping our arms up and down. And um, when I got a little bit older, probably about sixth grade, mm-hmm. my mom had a friend who was a trucker. Mm. And he took us for a ride in his truck. And I was sold right then and there. I was like, "This is what I'm going to do when I get older." But you got and, into, um, but you got into the healthcare field, though. So where did the, I did? Where, life, where did the life took life, life took, a life took a turn? Life took a life took a turn. I got in a relationship. I got pregnant. Mm. Had a couple of kids. Mm. Um, my husband was like, "Nope, mm-mm, nope, mm-mm," you know, and trying to be obedient or whatever your case you might want to call it. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I didn't, you know, and I got, got into healthcare and I was there and life took another turn. Mm. I was like, okay, now it's my time. Yeah. It's, your kids got, this, your kids got yeah. older. Are are you and, uh, are you and your husband still together? No. All no, right. No, no. So your kids no. got, your kids got older. Your, you and your husband decided to, the part way so yeah it's time to it's time to get into trucking well a little bit it took a minute after that probably about three years Mm -hmm. ballpark about three years after we split um that my my passion for health care was was not good it was it was not good right and here it is i'm at the time, almost 40 <laughs> at the time. So it was like, wait a minute, you know, and I got people <laughs> who were like barely in their 20s, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> coming at me sideways. And I was like, uh-uh, hold up, boo-boo. <laughs> you know, and I... It's like, said, I am old up. enough to be your mom. You said, you hold, know, up. You said like, hold up, boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. It it had got challenging, and it was just one incident where this little nurse she came into a patient's room mm-hmm. and gonna tell me what I better do. Mm. Oh, there, and oh, there I it is. about lost my manure. Mm. Popped your lid, I about huh? Lost it. Pop, pop that I lid. About <laughs> lost it, and and I I held. I held myself together mm-hmm. while in the presence of the patient. Mm. I finished doing what I was doing. I went on that halt because this was, she was new. Mm-hmm. Like she hadn't been there that long. Um, but I went on the hallway 
And I had her up against, I didn't touch her, mm. but I approached her enough to the point where she would have flinched. She I would have, probably she would have had a jail charge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you so know, it, it was so, time, it, it was and that. I was so hot, but I was so hot till I was crying. Uh, then it, it, I, it was I that. I said what I had to say because I couldn't put my hands on her because I couldn't afford to go to jail mm. because I had two kids who were still in school and they wasn't old enough to, you know, fend for themselves. Mm-hmm. So I had to think about them and I told them, I said, I quit. It, I said, it, it I don't that time. This. I said, I don't need this. And all the other nurses who knew me, you know, they was like, calm down, calm down. I said, no, 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 no. I do a lot of things, but I will not put up with disrespect. That's mm. one thing we're not going to do. We're not going to do that. I come here. I do my job. I may complain some, but when it comes to these patients, my job is done. And half the time, I'm the only one for the whole floor. Mm. And we had 30-something per side and 100-something on the other side. Well, other well, wing. Well, with that, yeah. with, with that, you, you definitely had to, had to make a, a, a quick a exit. Change. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Did you. Yeah. So, so I got into trucking. Did you go. And did you, I was scared. Did you, I was really, really scared. Did you go by way of did you go by way of of the school or did you go by way of the I trucking did. company? No, no. I went um went through school. I got to researching and um it was a few people I knew that drove trucks. Um and down in Texas they have free truck training. Well, that scared me. That scared me. Like, I didn't feel it was going to give me really what I needed. Mm. Um, I talked to a couple of different companies uh, that did training. Um, and for the ones who had been out here for a while, the associates that I knew at the time, it was like, nope, don't mess with them. Nope, don't mess with them, <laughs> you mm. know. Um, and I'm like, okay, well, what am I going to do? Well... I decided to go to, well, Roadmasters mm. accepted me. Roadmasters accepted me. So I went through Roadmasters to get my CDL. And it's crazy because, like, I was so scared the whole time, the whole time. You know, and I thought I wasn't going to pass. And, oh, my gosh. And then come to find out I passed as the highest person of the class. Okay, and that's what's like, up. Huh? That's what's <laughs> up. So, road, road masters, huh? So, who? Road masters what, in San Antonio, Texas. So, was so? How long ago was this? A little over six years now. Okay, okay. So, within that six year yeah. period, road masters was owned by Warner. So, did Warner did well? First thing first. I did. What, did you, I did, did go you, to Warner okay, okay, so you didn't pay out of pocket. Warner paid. Right. Okay. Well, at the time, I mean, like, I still had to pay back. Uh, but I did go to Warner. Mm-hmm. Um, I was supposed to stay with Warner for a year. I think it was two years. Oh, two years. I think Ooh. no. I think at the, I think it was two years. Mm. Um, did you stay? I'm not rightfully sure. Did, did you know no. um because once i got on well once i got on my own once i got on my own you knew the um, money wasn't there that was a whole that was a whole new ball game, <laughs> a whole new ball game. because you know you'd be on a truck or a trainer for a little bit right making um, about making about six seven hundred a week okay well they put me on my own and they put me with a reaper and i'm like I know absolutely nothing about reefer. Okay. Oh well, you'll get a figure out that the customers will let you know. Yeah, just huh? keep it at a, keep it at a temperature <laughs> and, and 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 don't let it get below that temperature. Well, much. but like I say, mind you, this is me just first getting out here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. First getting out here, knew absolutely nothing. When they say a person who don't know their hair from a hole in a wall, mm-hmm. that was me. You know, trying to get it figured out. 
Well, anyway, I hadn't been out uh, probably a little bit over a month. Um, and it was like, okay, well, I need to go home. You know, and oh, they didn't want to send is. me home. Oh, there it is. They did not want to send me home. And, and I you, was and, like, no, and you, thought, you know. And you thought when you got in there, like, yo, I could just tell them that I need to go home, and I could just go home when I need to go home. You found out the hard way, huh? I did find out the hard way. <laughs> but um, they let me go home, and then I came back out. Mm-hmm. And I think I might have been out almost two months at that time. And you said it wasn't. My daughter called me. No, no. My daughter called me and told me something had to happen with my son and that he was in ICU. Oh, shit. Well, okay. I'm like, uh uh, I got to go home. Right. And they was like, well, you can't go home, right? They did not. I say, look, I have an emergency. Mm -hmm. I need to go home. Right. So they got me back to the yard. They got me back to the yard. I got all of my stuff Mm -hmm. and I went home. Hey. And trying to find out what was going on with my son. Now, but, you, uh, it's it's funny that, you know, trucking companies like mega carriers, you know, when you try to explain to them, like, like you really need to go home, you got to go home. You know, I mean, they got I, they got plenty of truckers that can reload the load. They got plenty of they got plenty of truckers that can reload that load for you. If, if it's a life, Correct. if it's a life altering situation that you really need to get to, you know, they, they need to either a, you know, well, this dispatcher that I had, he didn't give two francs. Uh, then it's about time to, what I had going on. It's time but to go. I went home and I was home for like three days. And mm-hmm. it was like, okay, well you need to be back by, you know, such and such time. I'm nah, like, nah. until I find out what's going on with my son, then I'll be back. You know, I say, then I will be back. Well, the day after <laughs> the guy who trained me called me, he was mm-hmm. like, you quit? I was like, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, I got an emergency. Like my son is in ICU. Mm-hmm. He was like, well, my FM, you know, fleet manager, DM, whatever they call them, uh, called me and told me to call you because they saying that you quit. Mm-hmm. I say no, I have a family emergency. Mm-hmm. So basically, they fired me mm-hmm. while I was at the hospital with my son. Well, but I wasn't tripping on it because at the time I you had wasn't planning on coming. Relationship, but you wasn't. I, well, I had started a relationship okay. with someone, and he was in trucking, and he was an own operator. Yeah. So, so you. So that was the opportunity. That was the opportunity right there, which led to the fact that you wasn't going back anyway. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. You know, and I talked. I talked it over with him, and he said, "Don't." He told me, "Don't worry about it." He said, "Let me know when you're ready, and we can team." That's what's up. And That's I'm like, up. okay, well, cool. You know, but he lived in uh, St. Louis at the time, and I was still living down in Austin. And, I mean, like, really, on time, God sent, he took care of us That's while what... I was at the hospital with my son. That's what's up. That's God sent right there, man. You know. So. Yeah. So I mean, and we're still so, together, you know, and everything. But I did. I went over with him, and uh, we teamed for a little bit. Then I got on my own truck. And considering I had only, at this time, probably had my license ballpark four months, um, they put me on a truck by myself. Um and that that was a true learning experience. Okay. That <laughs> so fast forward. That was a true true. All right. So fast forward six years later. How many how how many miles you 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 put in so far? Do you think? Ooh. Well, when I was over there, oh man, better than a eight hundred a day. I mean, that's during the time we still had paper log, you know, and kind of sort of could do the most of the most, you know. Um, and I was home every other day. And I did. I, I loved that. Um, I had an opportunity to be lease purchased. Um, 
and that didn't work out because he decided he didn't want me with that truck. Okay. Um, then he he burned me out of it, and uh, that put a very, very bad taste in my mouth as far as uh, being an own op. Okay. Okay. Uh, so would but you? I did. I had lost my mind because I was making money I hadn't seen before. You know, if you a person prior to trucking, every two weeks, you're not even clearing a thousand dollars to get into trucking, and you clearing two plus racks a week, you kind of have a tendency to lose what let the older folks would say your rabbit ass mind, and I did. Okay. I okay. did for, you know, so, <laughs> so I was like, I was spinning it as fast as I got it. Right. Where, so, you know, I, I learned, I did, I learned, and it was truly a hard lesson. All right. So now, uh, now catching up, uh, catching up to the present, uh, whatever, uh-huh. I, I, you know, we, we have met. You know, the we rhymed a little bit. We have met back in back in the group and the Zello group, which I don't know if it's still in existence, but it was truck talking chill, right? Correct. Uh, are you still do are, are you still associated with with them, or do you still talk to anybody that's in there, or what's your status I do. with them? Um, I talk with uh, Brother Toe sometimes here and there. Um, who else? Brother Blaine, Don Juan, Old Dog, and every now and again, Sister Mel. Okay, um, so so I Deacon, guess the I, I guess the four. I think I talked to Deacon more. I guess I guess I talked to Deacon more than anybody. I, yeah, I guess the four horsemen is still in that particular group. Old Dog, Mel, Toll, and no. Blaine. No, 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 no. 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 I'm sorry. No. Am I missing something here? Because those those was the I mean, four. I those with them. Those was the four. The those, those was the four horsemen of the group. Uh, male. Uh, at the time, she was uh, transitioning into into leasing slash owner operation. Toe Jam, which mm-hmm. uh, Blaine. Uh, yeah, Blaine. Blaine. And uh, old dog, those those was the yeah. those was pretty much the four horsemen of that of that group over there. But you, but you don't associate with them. You just associate with them more on the phone, not not on the Zello app no more. Well, as far as the app, brother Blaine, um, and old dog, but everybody else is basically on the phone. Oh, okay, okay, that's what's up. Okay, yeah. that's that's what's yeah. up. All right, so yeah. you uh, so you 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 left uh, Facebook because that's where me and you was conversating at the most. But you 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 mm-hmm. recently popped up in TikTok in particular. Yes, it was a it was an incident that happened to you while you was on the road. Uh, looked yes. like looked like this. What driver cut you off? Explain to explain to us no. what. What happened in that? Um, had went to seventeen, and I was bar telling um, to my next pickup. Mm-hmm. Well, following their GPS, as opposed to sticking to the highway, it decided to send me the scenic route through mm-hmm. Florida, mm-hmm. and I ended up on uh, US seventeen North. Mm-hmm. Um, and while you know on that road it's just a two lane road no shoulder um and approached this driver and it was like what is going on like feeling was 55 at the time Mm -hmm. and um he started slowing down he slowed down to like 40 i'm like what is he doing you know how some of us truckers can get Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's 55. You need to be going 55 to 60 miles an hour. And so I'm watching him and I slow down and everything. And I'm looking and he slowed down even more. Well, we come around a curve and, well, he 
like he was going to turn into this, this like little parking lot or deal, whatever. Next thing I know, he went straight through a, a light line, the wooden pole. And I'm like, oh, my God. So it's like he almost accelerated and went to swerve back onto the road, went to swerve back onto the road and uh, ran into another light pole. Mm. And he cracked it. It like hit the top of his car. I think, um, did you, did you show that in the video that you, you did show that in the video, did you? When he, when the, I the light, think so. okay. Yeah. I got to go by. I, yeah. I think when I so. put, it had a pole. Mm, when I put this together, I'll, it, I'll have the video playing, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. He, so he, he was, did that. So what he was, he, he, what he do? Just blanked out. He. I mean, did well, you guys go I over mean, there and see how, another, how he was doing? Well, right. Uh, when I saw it, like, I just started shaking. And, you know, because I honestly thought he was unalive. <laughs> like, really, I really did. Like, what is going on? So I jumped out. It had a car behind me. They pulled behind me. And uh, we all running over to the car because it had... Uh, power lines down. When, when he hit that second pole, the mm -hmm. power line was down. Mm -hmm. So we run up to the car. We're like, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? And he looked, he was like hot, like lethargic. And I'm like, so the guy, he opened the door. I run around to the other side of the car and we trying to get him out the car and he said he's trying to, I'm like, no, just leave it. We got wires down. Right. They right. called the police, you know, um, and he was like, well, did you catch it? And I was like, I don't know, you know, as far as, you know, because these trucks, they got the cameras on them. Mm -hmm. But he was like, well, you kind of swerved pretty quickly and threw on your brakes. He said, it possibly caught it. And I was like, well, I don't know. So they stayed with him. I came back to the truck and hit critical event or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But, um... But if you hit if you hit yeah. the critical if if you hit the critical event after the event then no it ain't gonna catch it but if you if you well hard, supposedly they bag up like fifteen minutes right no nah, it's supposed to be like fifteen well you know what it de it it depends on it depends on the camera if you got the if you got the light tech system then yeah they they'll be able to actually go back into the camera a little bit a little bit farther back than 15 seconds at least at, at, at least yeah. that much at least that much okay so yeah they, they'll be able okay. to they'll be so. able they'll be able to see right right before it happened but but yeah that that was uh that, that I, I, was that was that like an epic was that like your first epic moment in trucking it was it was. Um, we got him out the car, and he was sweating. And I'm like, are you a diabetic? Mm -hmm. And he was like, no. I'm like, are you sure? Because he was so sweaty. Mm. Um, and like I say, other than that, we were just, you know, trying to keep him from going back to his car. But right. he ended up going back to it before the police and everybody came. Um so that was did that kind of was that. Um, did you ask him what happened? Did they did they send the ambulance? Saying, did they send the ambulance yes, or they anything? Did. So did he did he go they did. did he go away in the ambulance or was they able to get his car extracted and he was able to drive away? Uh, no, he did not drive. Yeah, I can imagine um, being that the the pole the is down on his car. He and the paramedic <laughs> right um, was there when I left. Um, okay. The police came, you know, the okay. firemen and everything had to come and uh, they checked him out. He decided he wasn't going to the hospital saying that he was feeling fine. You know, and it was like, huh? Well, like, you might as well go to the hospital because you your car is being told. How are you going to get home? <laughs> right. Yeah, so. Right. All right, so, so after that, you know, that was police, it. The police yeah, the police asked me, you know, 
a couple of questions and took down my information and all of this. And other than that, they told me that I should go, you know, okay. and from what they were saying, they wasn't going to do anything. Well, it doesn't. They it, was, and I found that very odd. Well, no, nah, no, nah, nah, I mean, you know, depending on his condition, I mean, his condition, I mean, he could have very well just passed out. You know, and just you know, and 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 ended up in the situation that he was in. I mean, I I don't think that the right. cops is going to give you know it's it's going to tick. Well, he's of course he's going to probably be ticketed for the damage. You know what I'm saying? But you know, but as a but at that moment, I you know you you know he probably just had a had a medical situation. You know, I mean, you guys did say that, you know, when y'all pulled him out of the car, he was he was in sweating and all like that. So he probably just passed out and then just didn't realize until you guys got him out of the car. So, but right. But because, I mean, he has stated that he, you know, remember looking in his rearview mirror and seeing me behind him and uh, his next memory was me. He's I was yelling. Asking him, was he okay? He said that was his next memory. All right, all right. So, yeah. what's what's up? How long have you been on TikTok, and what made you come on here? My daughter. Um, Always the kids. It's probably been been. <laughs> Always the it's, kids. It's uh, probably been a, a couple months. Okay. It's probably been a couple months. Um, I started out with watching and, uh, you know, having some good laughs and, you know, things like that. Um, and my daughter is, Mom, you ought to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, eh, no, no. So, I mean, as of right now, I'm still looking for, like, my kids. Gotcha. For gotcha. the whole TikTok thing. Yeah. Me, um, me not a fan of TikTok. I I freaking hate the app, but I do come across, you know, I do come across some good, interesting people that I do meet. So how how uh uh Nita, how how can the people find you on TikTok? Who uh through any of the the trucking um I hashtag quite a bit of the the trucking what's, channel. What's what's your um, TikTok name? Solo driver. Solo driver. Or, or sister three one eight. Sister three one eight on TikTok. All right. Well, yes. I'm I'm glad everything worked out for you. Worked out all right. You know, doing the accident. I'm glad that you wasn't involved in it. I am also happy that we actually connected back because it has. It has been a while, so I I definitely enjoyed the, the the conversation and and going back and reminisce a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna we definitely gonna keep in contact with each other. Yes. All, must. all right, we guys, must. you know the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men Podcast Show. If you guys want to jump on and get in with the conversation, 216-600-2090. Shout out to Miss Sister 318 on TikTok. You guys can find her there. Make sure you give her a follow and all like that. And Anita, or Anita man, thank you again for coming on. I really do appreciate it. You, uh, you, uh, ah, thank you. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> so, you definitely stay safe out there, and everybody else, y'all stay safe out there, and we'll get back with y'all in a little bit. Peace. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, class kids, who went pop. Death to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales, it won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart, the bars, you got pops. Merge right into Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom to me, but go off. Or make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rum, pump, pump. Y'all fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.